Hey guys, Brendo Air Productions here, and welcome to this tutorial on how to create an updater for your program, Part 1. Now, an updater is very nice because it can allow your users to get the latest version of your program without ever having to leave the program. So they get reminded that there's a new version, and they can immediately download the new version with no problems. So this makes it super easy on your users and yourself because you don't always have to keep your site updated with the latest version. Of course, you should always have your website with the latest version, but you know, it's all an opinion. Alright, so to start out this updater, for part one, we're going to need one thing, and that's the update VB library. Now, the update VB library is a .dll file, which can be found in the link below. All you need to do is download this and save it to my documents or something, and then we can use it in our project. Alright, so I've got an update updater test project here and what I'm going to do is actually import the DLL file which you need to do as well so just click project and then click add reference then we're going to want to press browse then you're going to navigate to where you stored that DLL file mine's in my documents and then DLL libraries and then you need to find the actual file just set that alright so now it's able to use in your project but your project is not ready to use it yet. Like, it's there, but your project hasn't acknowledged it yet. So what you need to do is actually make your project acknowledge it by using the imports code. So we're going to type imports update vb. Now the imports code works with every .dll library and is mandatory. Um, the imports code also can be used for importing certain other libraries, like if you need to set the, if you need to email someone something, you can actually use the imports code to import the email library. All right. So once the update VB library is imported, we actually need to set it able to be used in our project. So what we need to do is declare a variable as the update VB library. So you put this right under the public class and just type public updater as new. Make sure it says as new, otherwise it won't work update vb dot update vb so all this is saying is we're publicing we're making a variable that can be used throughout our program called updater and we're making it the update vb variable all right so now we can get into updating our actual program so what we're going to type for the first line of code is updater dot check internet all this does is checks the user's internet connection to see if it's working fine. So if this re this returns a boolean, if the boolean is false, then the internet connection is not fine. If the boolean is true, the internet connection is fine. But the nice thing about this boolean is we don't need to worry about it because the library takes care of it itself. All we need to do is deploy this code and we're done. So once that code is deployed, we actually need to check the version. right? So we need to type updater dot check version. Then it asks for two things, location and version. Now, location we're going to be covering in part two. Version we're actually going to be covering now. All version is is the version of the program you are building right now. So since this is our first build of the program, we're just going to make it version point one. Now, make sure these are in quotation marks because the number point one does not mean point one. All right, so make sure those are in quotation marks, otherwise it won't work. Next thing we need to do is if there there is a update available. So if updater dot update available equals true, then so if there's an update available, we're going to do stuff. But if there's not, we're going to actually deploy a message box that says you have the latest version all right but if there is an update available we actually need to download this update so we simply download the update by typing updater dot download update and then it asks for a location which will be covered in part two so then since it downloads the update we need to see if the download was a success. Okay, so if it was a success, it will return the value of the Boolean update success 
no, download success as true, right? But if it was not true, like if the update failed because the internet connection was lost halfway through, or a firewall blocked it, or any other reason, we can deploy a message box saying, download of update failed. Alright, but in most cases that probably won't happen. So if the download is a success, we need to run the update. So this can simply be done by updater dot run update. And then when the update is ran, it'll run a setup file, which we are going to be making in part two of this tutorial. But the setup file changes the program's files. And if you're a avid Windows user, you might have noticed that Windows does not like changing files of certain programs if the program is running. So what we need to do is while it changes these files, we actually need to exit out of our program. All right. So it'll run the update and then it will end. We'll just end the program. And that's it. That's pretty much your basic coding for part 1. Now, keep in mind that this is using an update vb library, which makes it about 10 times easier. If you weren't using the library, this code would be a lot more complex, but this library makes it a lot easier. Remember, if you didn't get the library in the beginning of the video, now's the time to get it. The link is in the description. All right, so now you can prepare yourself for part two by following these simple steps. In part two, we're going to actually be uploading some files to the web. Now, these files can be uploaded to any file hosting site, such as Mediafire, RapidShare, all those. It can even be uploaded to your own, your own domain if you have one. But the easiest way to take care of these files is a program called Dropbox. Now Dropbox just works as a separate folder on your computer, except everything in this folder syncs with the internet. So if we just put stuff in this folder, it will automatically be up uploaded to the internet. So if you want to prepare yourself step or for part two, make sure you download Dropbox, which is in the description below. So thanks for watching part one. Make sure you save your project and wait until part two is released, and we will keep on going for that. And also make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, so these videos, I don't have to split them in two parts, and I can just keep them one long video. All right, so thanks a lot. Have a good day, and I'll be seeing you next time.